Discord there. And then Caitlin, I can also send you the file um, as well afterwards. Okay. Just a reminder of our community agreements, um, actively participate, one mic, respect each other's voices and opinions. Um, we want you to be curious and ask questions and come on camera if you're able to. Um, but I know at seven o'clock folks might be eating or snacking or, or might be in a place where they, they can't come on camera. Um, Kaywin, I'll actually let you um, talk about these uh, predictions, assumptions, and disclaimers, and then I'll um, give you sharing access. Great. Thanks. Um, well, hello, everyone. I'm Caitlin Irvin, and I'm excited to be here with you tonight. I'll tell you a little bit more about myself as we go, um, but I had never done a the PAD or PADS before. Um, so this was cool. Um, so I predict that you will have lots of different feelings about planning for your future, which is totally natural and normal. Um, assumptions um, that you are at varying stages in the process of figuring out your life after high school based on maybe the grade level you're in or different experiences you've had or the access you have to different information. Um, and so my disclaimer is that I'm going to share a lot of information tonight because I don't want you to miss information that can help you find your future fit, whatever that might be. Awesome. All right. So I'll let you be able to awesome. share. Just pull up PowerPoint and then, Great. okay, you all can see that, right? Yeah. Great. Okay. Let me just find the chat box on my computer so it's available if I need it. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks again for coming tonight. Um, so we are going to talk about next level, finding your future fit, whatever that might be. Um, so like I said, my name is Caitlin Irvin and I use she, her pronouns. And Today, we're going to be talking about taking it to that next level um, with your education after high school and what steps that you can actually take at any point to find what fits you. Um, and I will be asking some questions. And so the more that folks participate, um, the more useful this time can be. Um, so without further ado, let me go to the next slide here. All right. So you're probably like, who is this person giving this presentation? So um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I grew up in West Virginia. Um, that's my that's my high school, Musselman Appleman. Our uh, high school mascot was actually an apple um, because there was an applesauce factory in our town. Um, and so that's a, that's a fun fact. Um, and after high school, I went to Dickinson College. That's a picture up there. Um, no, we didn't have all of our classes outside or anything like that, but that was a, that was a favorite spot. Um, and I started to get into the college access and post-secondary access space through my summer job in college, actually. So I worked for an Upward Bound program. Some of you might be familiar with Upward Bound. Um, there's a couple programs in Philly and, and all over the country. Um, so I lived on a college campus in the summers and was a counselor and tutor for students who were in high school, who would be the first in their families to go to college. Um, and I really applied for the job because I needed a summer job. Um, and then it, it quickly turned into my passion, working with students to help them um, figure out what they're doing and succeed once they're after high school. Um, and I just thought I'd let you know that my, one of the things that um, was my favorite experience in college was actually studying abroad. So um, that's something that some of you may consider as a possibility. And so um, hence the map of Africa, because I actually studied abroad in a country called Cameroon. Um, and it was there that I, you know, kind of decided to, to really pursue a career in education. So after, after college, I started working in a high school um, and working with students who would mostly be the first in their families to go to college. I was working in rural Pennsylvania and I um, did that for two years through a program called the Pennsylvania College Advising Corps. And from there I was like, I like doing this. How do I keep doing this? And so I went and got a master's degree in school counseling from 
the College of William and Mary. Um, and that actually brought me to Philadelphia because after I graduated from William and Mary, I started working at an organization in Philadelphia that does a something similar to what um, Fab Youth Philly is doing called Summer Search. And so I was there for the past six and a half years and I was the post-secondary counselor. So I worked with high school students um, to help them on their path to post-secondary options and then stayed in touch with them once they were in college or the military or um, various programs that they did. Um, and actually recently I, this last picture on this slide is actually my new office, which is at the University of Pennsylvania, but because of the pandemic, I haven't actually worked out of it yet. Um, so that will be a fun change in the future. So that's a little bit about me and where I'm coming from. Um, and so I'm just curious to hear a little bit about the folks on the call um, and for folks who are maybe looking at this later, um, this isn't as applicable, but I would just be curious to hear your name and um, if you're if you're in school, what grade you're in and maybe what high school you go to. Um, and you can feel free to either unmute yourself and say it out loud if you want to or drop it in the chat. Um, so I'll just give a quick moment for that. That will help me think about how to approach the rest of the presentation too. But yeah. All right. All right. Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead. And so, you know, something that I would really encourage you to consider as you are thinking about your future fit is really what are your hopes and dreams for your future? So I think that before you can really choose your plan for after high school, it's important to, to think about what you want. And so you might have heard the question at some point in life. I think this is often one that's asked is, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it's like, what does that mean? Um, I prefer to actually ask this question of what are your hopes and dreams for your future? Because your answer might include a career or something you wanna major in in college, um, it, but it also might be broader and might include a vision of your future home or lifestyle. Um, and, and so I think those are really important things to think about. So I would definitely challenge you to, to consider that. Um, and you don't have to have it all figured out right now. So um, you may know what you want to do in your future. You may not. It may change. It definitely did for me. I, you know, used to think I wanted to be a veterinarian and then a dentist. And then at one point I wanted to be an ambassador from the U.S. to another country. And ultimately here I am, like I said, working in the education space and, and loving that. And so it can definitely shift and change over time. And you have plenty of time to really explore that. And, um, and so we're going to talk about ways you can do that tonight. And I'll sort of leave you with some tools and resources later on in our time together that you can, that you can tackle. Awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm going to pose this question um, and I'd love to hear from you. You can drop it in the chat or feel free to unmute and share um, any, what comes to mind when you, when you see this, this question, what are your hopes and dreams for your future? And any answer is, is totally great. Hi, Maya. Thanks for joining. Um, I want to be a therapist. Cool. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we'll talk about some, we'll talk about the pathways that can, that can help you get there tonight. And Maya, sorry, what high school do you go to and what grade are you in? Um, I'm in 10th grade and I go to the Gerard Academic Music Program. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And I'm Caitlin, <laughs> just so you know. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about creating options to reach those hopes and dreams like becoming a therapist um, and how to get to that next level. And feel free to ask any questions as we go as well. Did anyone else want to share a hope or dream for the future before I go on? All right. 
All right, so um, I'm, I'm, I've tossed this word around a couple times already, this word post-secondary. Um, so in order to reach those hopes and dreams, you're going to need some sort of post-secondary education. But what does post-secondary mean? Um, so does anyone have any, any clues what this word post-secondary means? All right, so it, it, when I think about the word post-secondary, I think of it as any form of higher education and training beyond your high school diploma. And in today's workplace, we really feel like it's important to have some sort of credential beyond that high school diploma. And there's lots of different options and pathways to get there. So we wanna make sure you have the um, information to identify what's the best fit for you, what's gonna make sense for your future. Um, so what are some different post-secondary pathways? So this is the way that I categorize them. It's, you might hear teachers or counselors or, um, other folks in your life talk about them and call them different terms. And that's totally fine and great. Um, but when I try to kind of condense all the different possible pathways you can take, I, this is what I've kind of, uh, made it made it into so you can see that we have lots of different options and i am going to talk a little bit about each one of them um and you know all i i really truly believe that all the different pathways are really valuable and valid and that um there's there's a good fit for everybody um so first i'll talk about four-year college so Four-year college, um, when you go to a four-year college, you go and you earn what's called a bachelor's degree, and you can study a variety of different majors, which I guess you could think about as different topics that you focus on. So, for example, Maya mentioned that she's interested in, in becoming a therapist, so something that she might consider majoring in in college um, would be psychology, because therapists use psychology. Um, and a lot of the background in that in order to help people. Um, there's lots and lots of different majors out there. Um, and one way to kind of explore those is by looking at any college's website and just typing in the search box, like list of majors or something like that. And you'll, and you'll get a lot of things that pop up. Oh, great. Amelia says she went to Temple University for her bachelor's degree, which is a four-year university. And she got that degree in early childhood childhood education um, and not a teacher, but doing other things in the education space. So that's awesome. So for your colleges, um, there's different options. You can live on campus, you can live off campus, or you can commute, which is when you live at home and you travel in between each day to and from campus. Um, Four-year colleges also have options for class in person, online, or hybrid, so a mix of in-person and online. And you might know um, older, um, older siblings or older, maybe cousins or other friends or folks in your life who are in college right now, potentially. Um, and you will also know that, uh, there has been a lot of online learning, um, and hybrid learning in this past year with the coronavirus pandemic. Um, but a lot of colleges are planning on going back in person for the fall. And a couple of examples, like Amelia mentioned, is Temple is a, is a great example of a four-year college. Um, I also put Kutztown University on here. Um, and there are lots and lots of four-year colleges in Pennsylvania and across the country. I think there's like over, there's well over 3,000 colleges in the United States alone. So that is, um, those are four-year colleges. Um, so there's also two-year colleges, which um, you have potentially heard of the Community College of Philadelphia, which is our local community college in Philly. And so at a community college, you can earn an associate's degree, which is a two-year degree that you can then enter the workforce with. You, there's also um, diploma programs and certifications, which are helpful to directly enter the workforce upon graduation. And a lot of times diploma and certification programs are shorter. So they might be one year or they might be 18 months um, instead of a two-year or a four-year degree. 
Um, the other thing is a lot of people will go to a two-year college to start off, they'll earn their associate's degree, and then they'll actually transfer to a four-year college like we just talked about. And sometimes that can be a really effective cost-saving strategy, um, although sometimes people get financial aid packages at four-year colleges that make it less expensive to go there than to go to the community college. So I think that it's really important to consider all of these options. And I always encourage students to apply when you're a senior in high school, apply to your local community college as one of the places that you consider, whether you are thinking about four-year college, two-year college, a lot of our community colleges have technical and trade programs. And so these are really great option. And, um, even if you may go away for a four-year college, you might take a summer class um, at your local community college. And so it's always good to have that as an option. Similar to four-year colleges, you can live on campus or off campus or commute. Um, and again, we have all those different options for ways to learn. Um, and a, another example of a two-year college in the Philadelphia area is Harcum College, which you may or may not have heard of. Um, great. So technical and trade school is another type of post-secondary option. Um, and at technical or trade schools, um, which, you know, are, they, they can have the word college in them or they might not. Um, the two examples that I have on here are Williamson College of the Trades and Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology. Um, and those at those schools, you can earn um, associate's degrees, you can earn diplomas or other certifications in a variety of skilled trades. So sometimes, um, you know, I think uh, becoming a carpenter or um, potentially doing heating, ventilation, air conditioning, or plumbing or construction. These are a lot of the skilled trades that happen. Also, um, areas like dental hygiene or specific areas of nursing, a lot of times those are um, programs at technical and trade schools. Similar to these other options, you have um, lots of different options in terms of living environment and the way of learning. And I will say that a lot of times for technical and trade school, they would be much more in-person because it's a lot of hands-on learning. Um, you know, it's it's hard to learn how to do carpentry online, for example. Um, great. Then we have the military. So um, in the military, which we have four different branches in the United States, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, and the Marines. And actually, I'm probably missing a couple on there because I don't have the Coast Guard on there. But we all, you can train for a variety of different highly skilled careers, and there's different options. So you might know people who um, enlisted in the military and they're on active duty, and you also might have encountered people in your in your world that are in the reserves. So maybe the National Guard or um, the Marine Reserves, and that means that it is not, they're not active. They, they do trainings. Um, they have to, they still have to go to boot camp and all these different things. Um, and then have continuing trainings throughout the months of their commitment. Um, but there are options in terms of how like on duty you want to be in certain ways. And the one thing I would want to point out too, is that you can earn college credits and funding for different higher education options. If that's a path that you're interested in, if you go into the military. Um, and so I've, I've encountered a lot of people who say, oh, I'm going to go into the military so it can help me pay for college. That is something that um, can definitely happen. And I'll also point out that it's not the only way to pay for college. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. There's also workforce development programs, which I don't know if you've heard of any of these, but a couple in the Philadelphia area are Year Up or Job Corps or Power Corps. And these are specialized training programs that are usually shorter. So they're like six to 12 months or maybe up to 18 months. And they often have something like an internship or an apprenticeship 
which may be paid or unpaid that's in an in-demand field or industry. So for example, at year up, they are training folks in the um, IT, so different computer services, um, as well as business fields. And then you get an internship um, for, I think, six months, and then they help place you in a job after that. Um, and they've actually moved to an online model during COVID, but a lot of these uh, options are still happening um, to some extent in person. Any questions so far? Okay. The last one that I'll mention is the service year option. So this is an opportunity to develop real world skills through, um, through more hands-on team experience. And so you might have seen um, when you're riding the bus in Philly, um, the folks who are wearing khakis and red jackets that say city year on them. Those, those people might have been in one of your schools at some point. Um, and so city year is an example of a service year where um, folks will receive, they'll do projects that in the case of city year are focused on things like education and tutoring. Um, but there's also service year programs that um, focus on the environment or disaster relief, healthcare, alleviating, alleviating poverty. Um, and they receive the members of a service year program receive a stipend um, every month to support with their living costs. And they also often will receive an education award at the end of their term of service that they can use to pay for further training at um, you know, a two-year college or a four-year college. And sometimes people will do service years after they graduate from college, but there are options that are available to students right when they graduate from high school. So that is something that I wanted to point out. Okay, I'm just taking, I'm taking a stretch break. I don't know if anybody else wants to do it. Um, you know, I've been hunched over my computer all day and <laughs> all of that good stuff. Um, all right, so there's, we just talked about how there's, um, you know, there's all these different options that exist, right? But it's like, how do you find what's going to work for you? And so I wanted to introduce you to three different fit factors. Um, and so these are academic and career, financial and social and support. So when you're thinking about what you want to do in your future, you want to make sure that the options that you're applying to and that you're choosing have what you need to get there, right? And so when I, when I think about looking for the best fit, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down and, and give some examples for each one. So for academic, and Maya, I'm just going to use you as an example because you, you, shared, your, you shared your interest. So, um, you know, you wouldn't want to apply to options that didn't have a path for you to become a therapist, right? And so, you know, you wouldn't want to go somewhere that didn't have majors that would help you get there or that didn't have job or internship connections that could help you kind of level up and be more prepared for the field. Um, similarly, it's like, you know, if somebody, not every college has, and not every post-secondary option has all of the things. There's not schools that specialize in certain programs that specialize in, in other things. Something that comes up a lot um, is, you know, a lot of times people may want to be a nurse, for example. Well, not every community college, not every four-year college has actually a nursing program. And so sometimes in, in my work in the past, I've seen students apply to places and then it not have what, what's going to help them get to the career they want. And so when you're doing some research on finding those options for yourself, that's something you're going to want to look into. Um, you know, the other thing to think about in an academic and career area, for example, is size. So thinking about how do you learn well? And so, you know, if you're somebody who knows that you need more one-on-one -on -one attention, you're going to want to think about places that have smaller class sizes, right? Instead of having every training session or a class session be, you know, 200 people in a classroom, you might say, I want to have classes that are, you know, 50 people or less or 30 people or less. And a lot of places will be able to, to you know, check that box for you. Um, 
conversely, some people want to have that huge experience, right? And so um, those are just things to consider. Um, and I'm going to send you a, uh, a link at, at, towards the end of this presentation that has some further questions you can ask yourself as you go through this process. Um, Another area to really think about in thinking about fit is financial. So you want places that are going to be a good financial option for you that that will be able to that you'll be able to afford um, and that will so you won't have to be, you know, working too many hours and that distract from your classes or that you um, will have to worry about paying off debt and insurmountable amount of debt after you graduate. And so a couple of things I wanted to point out here are um, sticker price is one thing. So you might look at a college website and you know you you might log on to it and you might say, wow, that price is really expensive if you look up the cost. And it, it, it is. So you might look at certain things, um, you know, like the Community College of Philadelphia, um, if you're a full-time student there and you live in Philadelphia, is going to cost about $6,000 a year before financial aid, just for classes. Um, a four-year college might cost, um, you know, might cost anywhere between... It, it could really range because it depends on if you're gonna live on campus or if you're going to commute. Um, but one of the things that I want to point out is when you see that price on a website, on a college website, that is the sticker price. What I mean by that is it's the price before any financial aid is applied to your bill. And so you should know that most students who go to college and go to technical and trade school and these other options receive some form of financial aid. And so the price that you're going to be paying to go there is going to be less than the sticker price. You're not going to know when you're just looking at the website, what that sticker price, what that, what your actual cost will end up looking like. But I would really encourage you to not rule out an option at this point in the game, just because of the price. And I know that might sound really crazy because you might see a number that's like $70,000 a year. And you're like, what? That's crazy. Um, but a lot of times the places that have the highest cost can have more financial aid to give out um, in, the, in the form of grants and scholarships. And so, um, you know, Again, it's really about creating options for yourself. Now, that's not to say only look at that one place. You want to create lots of different options for yourself so that you can compare them. And sometimes you might even be able to leverage that against each other so that you can, um, you know, get more financial aid from the place that you really want to go um, and, and, and that sort of thing. So don't let the price tag totally deter you from the get-go. The other thing to note with prices is there's often a difference between the cost at a public school versus a private school. So an example of this would be um, Penn State. For example, Penn State is a public college in Pennsylvania. So if you are a resident of Pennsylvania, which we are, um, then you would pay a different price, a lower price than if you were a student who was from New Jersey. Um, and so vice versa, like if you were from Philadelphia and you were like, I wanna go to a public school in another state, you would be charged a higher rate. And so that's just something to consider. Um, and you might notice that when you're looking at places online is that they might have a different cost for in-state versus out-of-state. So if you see in-state and it's a school in Pennsylvania and you live in Philadelphia, then you would pay the in-state price. Um, and so that's just something to consider. In terms of private schools, you'll often see that the private schools will have a higher price tag, sticker price to begin with than the public schools. Again, I would encourage you to not rule them out 
at the get-go because a lot of times the private schools can have more money to give out in terms of scholarships and grants. So I've definitely seen instances where a student's applied to a variety of places, public and private, they then get um, their financial aid letters from all of those places. And it turns out that the private school is gonna cost less than the public school. And so that doesn't mean that that's always the case, but once again, just don't rule things out at this stage just based on the price tag. Um, but definitely do apply for financial aid and be mindful of the fact that you don't want to have to take out too many loans and graduate with a lot of debt. Um, the last thing I'll note under the financial piece is that if you live in Pennsylvania and you go to school and um, especially colleges and technical and trade schools in Pennsylvania, you'll be eligible to apply for what's called the Pennsylvania State Grant which is, um, you know, is upwards of $4,000 of free money a year that you can apply towards your education. And that's just one grant. That's not all the scholarships and grants that you'll get. Um, the reason I point that out is because over the years, I've heard a lot of students say, I don't want to apply to any schools in Pennsylvania. I want to get out of Pennsylvania. Um, and as a student who wanted to get out of my home state, I definitely understand that. And also Pennsylvania is huge. Um, you know, it takes like five hours to get to Pittsburgh. It takes like six and a half hours to get to Erie, which is like the exact opposite side of the state from Philadelphia. Um, and so if your concern is I want to go far away, there are very many options to be able to do that in Pennsylvania. Um, and at the same time, I don't want to say you should definitely go to school in Pennsylvania. You're, you've heard it multiple times from me already, um, but I really think that it's important to create options. So when you are applying to places and programs and colleges and whatever path that you're on, make sure that you have some options that are in, um, are in Pennsylvania. And if you're interested in going to places out of state, you can definitely apply the, to those places as well. Just make sure that there's some balance so that again, you can compare and you can see those different options. And then you won't be wondering like, what if, you know? Um, hi Peyton, thanks for joining. Um, the last area of the financial fit factors is this social and support area. So when you're thinking about those options and where you wanna be after high school to continue your education, some other things to think about are things like the diversity and the sense of belonging at you know a campus or a school um and i'm going to talk a little bit more about that on the next slide so i'm not going to jump into that as much right now um also things like what clubs and activities and maybe sports if you are an athlete the um school or program has so again just like you wouldn't want to go to a school that didn't have nursing if you wanted to be a nurse. If you are a volleyball player and you wanna continue playing beyond high school, you would wanna make sure that there were options to be able to do that at a school. Um, similarly, if you have a certain passion for um, you know, anything, rather, whether that's maybe community service or you know, things like you might want to study abroad in another country or any number of things, you would want to make sure that the places have those options too. Because yes, you're going somewhere to get that education. And that's the whole point is to go and get a further credential or degree. And you have to have some balance too. You can't just be academics 100% of the time. You're going to have to feel supported and included and involved socially as well. Um, and then things like location. Um, so, you know, thinking about how far away from home do I want to be? Some people want to commute to school. Some people want to be as far away as possible. Others are like, you know what? I'd like to be able to get home on the weekend if I need to. And so going somewhere that has, you know, a, a Amtrak station so that I can come in and out of Philly to 30th Street would be important. Um, and for other people, they're like, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to go somewhere. Um, so those are th some things to think about, as well as the resources that are available on campus. So an example of this might be um, you 
anticipate that you're going to need some support with your academics. And so wanting to make sure that they have a good tutoring center or a writing center on campus or um, something that I talk a lot about with students is, is therapy and seeking counseling. And so um, most of the time, if you're um, a student, you can access the counseling center on campus for free and either get unlimited sessions or, you know, five sessions a year or something like that. And so if that's something that's important to you, you would want to research that as well. And all of that information can be found on a school or program or college's website. Any questions about the fit factors before I move on? So I wanted to just highlight minority serving institutions. So um, I think that um, you may have heard of historically black colleges and universities, which are called HBCUs. Um, something that I think is a little less uh, talked about or known about are these other types of minority serving institutions. For example, Hispanic serving institutions called HSIs, tribal colleges and universities, TCUs, and then Asian American and Pacific Islander serving institutions, which is a long, a long term, but AAPISI. Um, so today I'm just, I'm going to focus on the HBCUs and the HSIs. And so I wanted to point this out because I think an important factor in considering um, your options for after high school is um, thinking about like diversity and sense of belonging on a campus. And so, you know, in our country, while our colleges and universities are now open to students from all races and all backgrounds, many of our two-year and four-year colleges and universities were not always open to students of color because of racism and other systems of oppression in our country. And so as a result, most colleges, I mentioned there's like over 3,000 colleges in the United States, most colleges in the United States are still predominantly white institutions, which is also called PWIs. So you might hear that term um, at school or um, when you're talking to other folks, so PWIs is predominantly white institutions, meaning that the majority of the students there are white, and even though the school is open to all students. So most of the predominantly white institutions have cultural centers and different affinity groups on campus for students of color. Um, and some examples that I would point out of some um, PWIs in our area are, are Temple, Drexel, University of Pennsylvania, Westchester University. Um, so some colleges, what is this minority serving institutions term? So some colleges are considered minority serving institutions and they specifically provide access to college for students of color. Um, while they provide access to students of color, they're also open to students of all races. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more, like I said, about HBCUs and HSIs. So I'm gonna read off my notes because I've got some statistics. So historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, um, they were started prior to 1964 to ensure that black students received a quality and empowering education. That legacy continues today as they provide students of all races with a supportive environment that celebrates black culture and history connects students with unique professional networks and offers strong academic programs. So does anyone have an example of an HBCU that they could chime in with? And if not, I'll, I'll share a couple. Cheney University? Yeah, yeah, thanks Maya. Cheney is definitely an HBCU and I believe it was the first HBCU in our country, yeah. Um, a couple other examples are Lincoln, which is also in Pennsylvania, um, Howard in Washington, D.C., Spelman in Atlanta, and there's, there's many, there's many, many others. Um, and so, like I said, the other type I wanted to point out is these Hispanic serving institutions. So in more recent years, these HSIs have been identified and their colleges were at least 25% of students in their student population identify as a Hispanic or Latino. Currently, there are two colleges in Pennsylvania, only two, that are on the list. Um, that's Lehigh Carbon Community College and Reading Area Community College. So neither are in our general area. 
Um, but there are some schools that are on the emerging HSIs list that are in Philadelphia. And th those include Community College of Philadelphia and LaSalle University. Um, and so I think that institutions are trying to, um, you know, be more inclusive and um, welcoming to students from all um, different racial backgrounds and other identities. Um, and I would definitely encourage you all to consider minority serving institutions in your search of colleges if that's the pathway that you choose for yourself. Any questions there? Okay. So we talked about different options. Um, we talked about, um, you know, the different types of fit. So how do you level up? How do you get to those different options for after high school? Um, so here's six tips <laughs> that I put together um, and that I think can really help you get to that next level. So the first one is form your support team. So um, feel free to chime in in the chat or unmute yourself and say it out loud. Um, anybody who you can think of who's on your support team. And when I say support team, I'm talking about people who might be in your school or in different programs you're a part of, friends, family members, other folks in the community um, that can be on your team and really be, um, you know, supports and cheerleaders for you as you take this next step. Some of you might be the first in your families to go to college. Um, and so you might, uh, sometimes people think, oh, I don't have that guide or I don't have um, that, you know, person who's done it before me. Um, and yet I think all of you have um, folks in your life who can be supports, whether they've gone to college or not, um, whether they've gone to a program that you're interested in or not. Um, and so I would just really encourage you to um, think about that support team and like assemble them, right? And keep them posted on your on your journey. Um, oh yeah, and definitely a great plug. Fabu Philly is an excellent resource for you all um, to be part of your support team. So I'll pause for a second. And if anybody wants to feel free to put in the chat or say it out loud, somebody who is is on currently or who you would want to be part of your support team. I think for myself, um, you know, I was really, um, it was really helpful to me to have other friends who were going through the process at the same time. So like my classmates, my peers, who, um, whether we were on the same path or not, we were, we were, um, you know, kind of at the same stage in terms of, um, oh, this is what we should be doing right now, or, uh, oh, did you submit an application or keeping each other accountable for, for different deadlines and stuff. Um, yeah, so I also will point out that another, um, you know, another step you can take is really doing your research on careers and post-secondary options. So again, putting you on the spot, Maya, um, but, um, you know, researching what does it take to become a therapist? What type of, um, what type of things do I need to study? What level of education am I going to need? What experiences can I do now or in a couple years that can help me really um, get my hands, um, you know, in, in that, right? Um, and so I think that doing that research on different careers, and that will also then help you do the research on your different post-secondary options. Um, and like I said, again, you don't have to have it all figured out if you don't know what you want to study or pursue as a career, that's totally okay too. Um, but doing your research now, trust me, you will thank yourself later. It may be like, oh, do I want to spend my time doing that? Or do I want to go hang out with my friends? And I totally understand that push and pull. Right. Um, but you know, I would definitely encourage you to do some, do some work on that now, bring your friends into it too, you know, um, maybe spend some time doing that together. I know it might not seem as fun as, as some of the other stuff you could be doing, but you will thank yourself later and it's well worth your time. Um, the other thing is really create options. You've heard me say it multiple times in this presentation. Um, it's kind of, I'm kind of a broken record on that front, 
But I really do mean it, like create options and open doors for yourself. Now's not the time to make decisions. It's the time to make options for yourself. So as you research, you know, don't narrow it down to one specific place or program or school or option that you want make make multiple options for yourself it's it's okay to have that dream school um but don't totally fixate on that and make it the only place you end up applying um, because like i said you'll be able to compare different options different offers different financial aid um and so really um you don't have to make those decisions until your senior spring in like April of senior spring. And so, you know, do yourself a favor now and just create those options. I'll also really encourage you to, to focus in school, like be on your grind. And um, by doing that, you, you actually create more opportunities for yourself. So whether that is because of the grades you're getting or the folks that you're connecting with you, if you're, involved in school and focusing in school, you know, a teacher might notice and they might say, hey, have you considered this certain thing? Or they might connect you with an opportunity. Um, and so definitely being focused in school will, will open more opportunities for you. The other thing is preparing for and taking the SAT, ACT, or ASVAB if those are applicable. So the SAT and ACT are tests that some colleges require to get in. Um, the ASVAB is a test that the military branches require. Um, and there are ways to prepare and study for that. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna provide you with some resources just in an, on the next slide where you'll um, be able to tackle some of that on your own. One thing I wanna note that's different this year than it was you know, two years ago because of COVID is that the SAT and ACT for college entrance are actually in some cases a little less important than they were before because with COVID and you might have, you might have witnessed this yourself, you might've had older um, friends or family members experience this, but a lot of um, the test sites and days for the SAT and ACT, which often takes place on Saturdays during the school year, they were canceled because of COVID. Um, and so as a result, um, you know, because we couldn't gather together and couldn't, um, the schools weren't open and all those sorts of things. And so as a result, lots of colleges that used to require the SAT and ACT are not requiring it for the classes that are um, like the class that is graduating from high school this year or the current juniors in high school. So if you're a 10th grader or a ninth grader, maybe the SAT and ACT will be um, back really in action by the time that you're a senior and a junior. But I think that a lot of colleges are moving away from requiring it, um, which means to focus on other areas. Um, and, but you should definitely check and see if places that you're interested in are requiring it. And in the resources I'm providing, there's a link to, to be able to figure that out. Oh, excuse me? Yep. I have a question. I'm a junior yeah. and I'm about to take my SAT of oh, great. June 5th. I'm kind of nervous about it because uh, I didn't get to have any SAT prep because of COVID. And totally. I've been having a hard time trying to study and focus on it because I do got a lot of work too. And yeah. I so, so. Yeah, it's always tough when it's at the end of the school year and everything is due. Um, yeah. So are you interested in my in, in some kind of suggestions on how to study or, or how to approach it? Yeah, I can take some time on how to study. Okay, yeah. So um, definitely check out this link that I am going to, um, let me see. I'm going to share it in the chat towards the end because I can't figure out how to do everything right now. Um, but there's definitely some I know that we spend so much time on the computer and on Zoom and all that stuff and our eyes are going crazy these days, um, but there is free SAT prep online um, through Khan Academy, um, which you might've accessed through school for other things, um, but you can definitely do that. Sean, did you take the PSAT by any chance? That's no, the SAT. Okay. I already took the PSAT in uh, November. So if you took the PSAT, you can actually import your scores. I know I did. Okay, cool. So it will create, so Khan Academy will create that individualized study plan for you. So then you don't have to do everything. You can focus on the areas that it's identifying that you need some support with. Okay. So that's what I would say. The other thing is remember that as a junior, you're going to have another opportunity to take it. So this first time around, I would say, I would really encourage you to if you're able to in the next month, do some of the prep, 
um, do some practice on Khan Academy. Um, and you can do some of the, the free flowing, like the not timed questions, but then I would also encourage you to do some of the timed quizzes because that's something that happens with the SAT is that um, it is a timed test and when you actually take it. And so if you practice without timing yourself, that's better than not practicing at all. But in the moment when you're in that test room on a Saturday and they're saying you have 25 minutes to do this section, um, it'll be better if you've done a little bit of practice with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so the, the other thing I would say and um, is to, some of these are kind of basic. So I would say, try to get a really good sleep the night before eat some, eat something before you go and take the test. Okay. Even if you're feeling really nervous and I know it can be hard to eat things when we feel nervous. Um, but get a granola bar in your stomach or something like that. Bring a snack. If you're able to, to the test, because halfway through the test, when you have a break, you're probably going to be a little hungry and it's hard to concentrate on that test. If your stomach's growling. Right. Um, also, um, bring a calculator. You're not going to be able to use your phone as a calculator on the test. So whether that is you have access to a graphing calculator, or that can be just a very basic dollar store calculator. Um, just bring that with you because that will help you on the math section. Um, and then, like I said, you are going to be able to take it again. Um, and so just try your best, be present, put your effort into it. Um, and just, again, remember that you're going to be able to take it again in senior year in the fall before applying to colleges. Um, I will also note for folks who aren't maybe at the stage of taking the SAT yet, that if you qualify for free and reduced free or reduced price lunch at school, you will qualify for two fee waivers to take the SAT or the ACT for free. Um, so if that applies to you, definitely reach out to your school counselor um, or teacher at school who can connect you with the school counselor because they're normally the ones that have those fee waiver codes. And um, you, if, you, if you qualify for that, you should definitely not be paying to take the SAT, um, which can be like $50 each time you take it. But if you have the fee waiver, it will be free. Um, does that help, Sean, to hear some of those things that I just said? in terms of those tips. I heard you, thank you. Yeah, great. And, and look out for um, this link that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna share afterwards that has um, some more information on preparing for the SAT. The other thing is just keep in the back of your mind that some of the, place, some of the places that you will be applying for college might not require it. So it's not going to be a total make or break, okay? Um, it could help you though, you know? Um, and so definitely I think it's a good idea for you to take it and to try your best. Um, and then after you take it and you get your scores back, you can actually then um, target your kind of practice more. So if you take it in June, you'll get your scores back a couple of weeks later. And then maybe you have some more time over the summer rather than the end of the school year when you have all these other things do and everything going on. And so, you know, maybe you can, I know it's not a fun way to spend your summer, but maybe you can do some SAT practice over the summer. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying to spend seven hours a day doing that, but maybe you set aside one afternoon a week and you do a little bit of SAT prep or something like that. All right, I know that I'm running up on time, so I just want to make sure that I cover these last couple things. Um, so the other, the the last tip on this slide is to really engage and use your time well um, during your high school career. So, um, you know, you all are clearly go getters. You're at a presentation about finding your your next steps on a Thursday night at you know almost 8 p.m. after you've been on Zoom school all day probably, right? And so um, you're engaged in this, this awesome organization, Fab Youth Philly. I would imagine that you have other responsibilities and involvements as well, whether those are clubs and activities or sports or taking care of your younger siblings or cousins, or you might have a job as well. And those are all things that you can put on your applications when they ask you about things you're involved in. Sometimes people think, oh, well, I'm not actually involved in anything. And then I'll talk with a student and they say, oh yeah, but I do, I have to pick my siblings up from school every day. And then I make sure they do their homework and that they, um, 
you know, are, are good to go. And, and that's something that is, you can actually put on a college application, believe it or not. Um, same with jobs, same with different clubs and activities. Um, so use your time well, get involved or stay involved in things. Um, and, and that will, um, you know, that will help you with your applications. It also can help with career exploration and, and building, um, building your interests or discovering your interests more as well. Um, oh, and I just want to shout out Amelia in the chat for sharing some of her experience with the SAT. Um, and yeah, I definitely feel you there. I, uh, I didn't, I don't want to remember those times, <laughs> but no, it's, it, it, um, it all worked out. All right. So this is my, um, oh, let me see. I'm not clicking the right thing. This is my, one of my last slides. So, um, these are some resources that I want to share with you all. Um, oops. So three things I want to point out, um, and we'll we'll share these links with you guys. So um, I'm sharing a Google Doc with you all that's a future planning resources guide. This has like all of those different links that I was mentioning throughout this this um, conversation tonight, this presentation tonight, um, including things like what schools are requiring the SAT and ACT. How can you prepare? Um, how can you dig more into what type of education? path you need to be able to get to a certain career. So definitely check that out. Um, I also want to shout out to other um, organizations and their websites. So PA Career Zone is a state of Pennsylvania website that has different like assessments and um, assessments is a big word for saying, you know, there's little quizzes that you can take to, um, to think more about you know, your interest or to understand more about different pathways. Um, and that can be a really great option. And then I also want to shout out the Step Up to College Guide, which is a website. Um, and you might have back in the time when we were actually in school, you might have received a copy of the Step Up to College Guide. It's created by the organization Philadelphia Futures here in Philly. And it's a really awesome comprehensive guide that, um, has all sorts of information about how to get to those different post-secondary options. Um, but they also have a really robust website and you can definitely, um, you can definitely check that out as well. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to, let me see, I'm gonna put these links in the chat so that, and, and then I think Amelia can share them out with you too, but I'm just gonna put them in here in case you want to save those on your computer um, or anything. So those are three different links. Um, great, and then feel free to check those out at your own leisure. I know that it's the end of the school year. And so definitely I would say prioritize, you know, finishing strong with your classes, um, turning things in um, and um, just getting through this, this Zoom school year, you know? Um, all right, I know that was a lot of information. Um, I do just want to, if you're able to stick around um, or if you have questions and you're able to stick around, I'm happy to stick around for a few minutes and answer those. Um, no question is silly or anything like that. Um, and actually the only silly question is one that isn't asked. Um, so if you, if you have any questions, um, feel free to say them out loud or to drop them in the chat. Um, whatever you have a question about could help somebody else as well. So like, is there like a significant difference between a university or like a college? Mm, good question. Yeah, that can be really confusing. So, um, and it actually has felt like it's gotten a little bit more confusing to me over the years because I had originally been told that a college had only offered bachelor's degrees, so, or associate's degrees and bachelor's degrees, so the four-year and two-year degrees, and then a university had, like, a four-year, had those degrees, but then also had what's called a master's degree, which a lot of times people who become therapists have to get a master's degree, which you might have heard referred to as graduate school, so it's another level of, of school beyond, beyond getting um, your, your first degree. Um, 
But now some places are still calling themselves colleges, but they have the word university or, but they have master's classes. Sorry, I'm making this more confusing. Um, so really what I would say is there's not a huge, like it's not a huge difference. Um, it's not like one is more, you know, prestigious than another a lot of the time, you know? Um, and so you, sh when you're, so I think a lot of times I use those words interchangeably, like college and university, um, or a lot of times I'll put like college slash university because, um, you know, it's, and it's, it's like you could apply to, let's think of some colleges. So, um, uh, uh, well, Cabrini, Cabrini is a university, Westchester University. Um, but I, like I went to Dickinson College um, or Franklin and Marshall College or Community College of Philadelphia. Um, so, so there are, um, that is confusing. And ultimately they're like the same thing. <laughs> that was a long-winded way. I'm sorry, that took me a long time to answer. That was a good, good question. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Any other questions? If you come up with questions in the future um, and feel free to um, let Fab Youth Philly know and they can get in touch with me and I'm happy to, if I don't know the answer off the top of my head, I will, I will find it for you. Um, but definitely wishing you all well with the rest of this really um, interesting school year. And um, again, just like really commend you on, uh, you know, taking control of, of your future and, and really driving that, driving that force. Thank you so much, Caitlin, for joining us today. Really valuable information. Happy to be here. Awesome, and I'll I'll make sure to follow up with everyone with the um the resources that that Caitlin shared as well.